You've already, you've already, you've already won the fight. You made it through the door. Amen. Amen. The biggest fight we have is just making it through the door. Amen. So you know what? Uh, we want to come before God in prayer this morning. We want to pray, Amen, for our, our mother church in El Centro. Amen, Pastor uh, Lorenzo and Sister Stephanie, Pastor Tony Hernandez, and Sister Angelina. We always want to keep them in our prayers. Amen. We want to pray for the surrounding churches. Uh, Rialto, Riverside, San Bernardino, amen. Uh, um, continue praying for the San Fernando Valley, amen. The churches in San Fernando, amen. Um, we also want to pray for the churches in Mexico, amen. We want to pray for the North North Mexico, all those churches in Tijuana, and Rosarito, Naicali, and Sanada. And we want to continue praying for them. Um, uh, also, continue to pray for Colombia and for Peru, amen. Amen. We, uh, we're invested in those countries, amen. So let's continue to pray for them. And, and I know I know we give every month uh, to these countries, but uh, but pray, amen. Pray for these countries, amen. Pray for them, amen. Uh, pray for for uh, uh, for the pastors, for their families, amen. For God to continue to bring revival. Pastor Roberto in Peru, he got a new building, a new location, and it's always it's always a difficult transition. Um, so you want to always want to pray, pray for them, keep them in prayer, Amen. Keep uh, pa uh, the pastors in uh, Italy, yeah, in your prayer, Pastor Franco and Pastor Andres, Amen. And let's not forget about um, Pastor Ernesto, Sister Fabiola, and the city of Paris, France, Amen. We want to pray that God will be with them, that God will help them, that the God will continue to bless them, Amen. That they continue to build a, a, a work, Amen. We hear we hear of, of places like you know. Uh, Paris, France, and, and Italy, and we're thinking, man, well, I, man, I want to go out there, you know. <laughs> amen. But you know that it's still mission works, amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, Pastor Ernesto and Sister Fabiola, they're not from France, amen. <laughs> they don't speak French, amen. <laughs> you know, uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, she's from Venezuela. He's part Italian and he's Venezuelan. Yeah. And, and they made their way over there. And so we want to pray that God will just move, continue to help them, amen. So so we want to continue praying for them, amen. Also this morning, amen, I want you to pray for those, amen, that didn't make it, amen. Pray that God will have, you know, have his hand upon them, God will touch them, amen, and that, that God will just bless you this morning, amen. We want to pray for the word this morning, that God will just anoint it, bring it up, bring it a powerful message, amen. Amen. So you know what, uh, this morning, amen, you can trust in God. We trust a lot of things in this world. Amen. Why don't we trust God this yes, time? Amen. amen. We just trust God. Amen. Let's leave. Right, let's right, leave yeah. it. You know, we just we just uh, completed a Bible study. Amen. On the promises of God, and yes. you know, His promises are yes and amen. Amen. He wants to give us the desires of our hearts. Amen. amen. And and sometimes, like He's like it says, you know, sometimes we just need to be still and know that He is God. Amen. Yes, amen. Sometimes we need to just be quiet and get out of His way. Amen. amen. Let God be God. Amen. Yes, That's why we pray in faith. Amen. So you know what? Trusting God this morning. Allow God to help you, allow God, amen, to minister and bless you. Let's come with the heart of surrendering and let's cry out to God as we open up our prayer, amen. So let's worship God this morning. Yes. Hallelujah, we praise you, God, we worship you, O Lord. We glorify you, my Lord Jesus, hallelujah. this morning God for this time this opportunity God you have given us God to come into your house God we pray God in the mighty name of Jesus God that you just brought your spirit God we pray for these needs God for the churches God for the for the leaders God we pray God for ministry God we pray for every heart in this place God for every broken heart every emotional distress every financial distress God I pray God that you just brought your spirit God God that we would know God that you are Lord this morning God God, we ask you, God, that you would just bless your, your word, God. Bring an anointing, God, and touch our hearts, God, this morning, God. We thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Make sure uh, you uh, greet someone this morning. Amen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Nice to see you again. See you again. <laughs> I don't. I was like, yeah, I remember the, the conference. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Also, two-day revival. We're gonna have Pastor Alfonso Lara Man on uh, June July on June 29th. It's a Saturday and Sunday, June 29th in the, at six o'clock on Saturday, and then the 30th will be the uh, Sunday morning service at 10. Also, I'll be making the I'll make the flyer for it um, on Saturday morning, the 29th. Amen. Locally, we're gonna have a, a women's um, women's gathering in the morning. Amen. So from uh, from Sister Susana, amen. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Um, come come here, amen, and, and see what God has for you. Uh, the annual 4th of July celebration at our house, amen. We do this every year, amen. So come, there's fireworks, there's food, there's more fireworks, and there's more food, amen. and then there's more food, <laughs> and then there's some fireworks, amen. And then somewhere in between, there's food and fireworks, amen. You don't want to miss it, amen. We eat a lot, there's a lot of food. I, I start preparing the, the meat because I have a smoker and I, 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 we usually get like, I usually get about a day or two preparation involved and uh, I'm grilling all day. It's a really good time. It's a lot, a lot of food. Everybody shows up, come be a part of it. Uh, we're looking at some yard games and stuff so we can have out there so you guys can, can, uh, can have some fun. Amen. So it's a good time, a good time of fellowship. Amen. Invite someone, invite them. It's a good time to get somebody from your family that you've been trying to get to church to come in together and. And just be a part of what we're doing. And they can see that, you know, we can still have God even as Christians. Uh, have fun even as Christians. Amen. Amen. Paris in the fall. Amen. 2024. I just put this up. So we need to start planning ahead. We're going to Paris, France in the fall of 2024. We need to start thinking about if you want to go. You, if you want to go, you need your passport. You cannot get there without a passport. It's not like crossing to Tijuana. Amen. It's a little bit different. So it's people think that trips like this is a once in a lifetime out of reach, something we can never do. And how could I ever? I'm going to tell you, with God, all things are possible. Amen. I, I I've gone to. London, I've been to Paris, I've been to Rome, I've been to Lima, and I was just a little street punk in Ontario who never thought there was life outside of the city limits. Mm -hmm. Amen. God can make a way. Right. So if you want to go, it's not as expensive as you might think. The biggest expense is going to be your ticket and the, and the hotel. Mm -hmm. And it's not that bad. Because if, if we Airbnb it, we do all that kind of stuff, we can make it work. Amen. And it's going to be a mission trip. Yes, a mission trip to Paris, France. It's a mission trip. It is a brand new church that we just opened up. They opened up this year. They moved from, from Pescara, Italy to, to their journey has been, they were in Venezuela. Then they went to Pescara, Italy with Pastor Andres. They've been there, helped them build the work. Now they're now this couple. They're they are now in Paris, France. They're learning the language. They started their church out of their living room, and they got a group of people coming. They got a group of people. God is doing a the work there. So this is a mission trip because what we're going to do is we're going to go out there. We're going to hit the streets of France. We're going to let people know about Jesus. We're going to invite them. We'll figure out if we can if we can get musicians going. Maybe we'll do some songs or do something out there. We'll figure something out. We're gonna do something big. We're gonna we're gonna make noise in Paris, France. Amen. We're gonna let Paris, France know that Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. So you know what? If you're interested, keep this in mind. It'll be in the fall of 2024. We're looking at possibly around October time. Amen. Uh, it's gonna be after our our annual rally in September. So it'll be right right around in September, early October, that we want to head out there. Amen. So make plans. Get your passport. If you have questions on how to do that, let me know. I can help help guide you. We can walk you through it, and we'll make a way. We need to fundraise to help people get there. Then we're going to fundraise. We're going to do all we can to get everybody there. Amen? So if you're interested, um, make sure you talk to me. Let me know. Um, so these are the announcements. We're going to lift up an offering. Amen? So let's worship God. Amen. You know what? This uh, this uh, morning you give with an open heart. Amen. And you can give on Zelle. Amen. Uh, with uh, ndgive at gmail.com. Amen. You can give in the basket. Amen. But you can also surrender your heart and give to God. Amen. Allow yeah. God to bless you. Amen. That's one, usually one of the last things we do. 
is surrender to God, amen, in our finances. We want to trust God. I always say this. You want to trust God with our marriage. We want to trust God with, with our spouse. We want to trust God with our kids. You know, imagine we want to trust God with our kids. And and, and, and we say, God, my, you know what, God, my kid, I'm done. It's all yours. You deal with them, God. But then we don't want to trust God with our finances, amen. So, God, you, can have, you, already got my, you already got my spouse, God. You already got my children. What more do you want? Amen. Stay away, from, stay away from my wallet, God. You know what? Today, trust God in your finances. Amen. 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 I, found, I found it simple. Prayer is, a, prayer is a powerful thing. Prayer is a powerful thing. It is. We just, we just read where, where, where in Jeremiah where it says, he says, uh, he says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face. He's talking about prayer, seeking God. He goes, I will hear your voice from heaven. He doesn't say I might. He says, I will hear your voice from heaven. And, and that's very powerful to know that God will hear, right? But we want God in our finances. Say, God, you know what? Bless me. Bless me with a better job. Bless me with this. And we, people even pray to God that, that he'll bless them to win the lotto. Amen. Amen. And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is, is we say, God, you know, here, God, here. Meanwhile, we're not surrendering it to God. Mm. So surrender it to God. Yes. God, I want you in my finances, God. God says, okay, well, be still and know that I am the Lord. Get out of my way and let me take care of it. Mm. You know, yeah. surrender your finances to God. Say, God, you know what? It's all mine. And one thing I found out is that, is that, and I said this recently, is, is, is when you learn to put, uh, to put God first above your children, above your job, above your marriage. It's hard to see that. It's hard to understand that. How can I put God before that? You know, God will understand that my heart is for my children. But God does it. God says and he is a jealous God that he wants to be first. Right. Amen. So imagine this. If you if you put God first and put your marriage second, your children second, your finances second, God then in turn will now put that first for you. You imagine that? If you put it first for God, then what happened before God, then God can't touch it. But the moment you surrender it, God now puts it first. And the blessings pour from heaven. He says, prove me now here with that I will not open up the windows of heaven for the blessings you shall not have room enough to receive. God wants to bless you this morning. Right. Surrender, allow God to bless you. Be faithful in your in your giving. Bring your tithe, give an offering, and support missions. Amen. Amen. So let's bow our hearts as we bless the gift and the giver. God, my Father, we thank you, God, this morning, God, for this opportunity to give. We pray, God, that you just brought your spirit, God, upon our finances, God. God, we pray, God, that you bless those, God, who can give, God. And we pray, God, that you continue, God, to pour out your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing and for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, and him with adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, and him with adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Also in prayer, if you guys can remember, always keep uh, Juan and Alvia. In our prayers, amen. Amen. Brother Juan, Sister Alvia, amen. They've been a blessing to the church. Amen. They follow us all the time. They're watching all the time. Amen. They're givers. They're a blessing to us. So you always want to keep them in your prayer, amen. In our prayers, amen. Um, also, uh, keep uh, my daughter-in-law. Her name is Juwan. Uh, she was in an accident yesterday. And uh, somebody rear-ended her. It was actually pretty bad. She has a newer car. She has a new car, but uh, her car got some damage, um, but the impact was pretty severe on the other car. It, it damaged her pretty good. She's, she's real sore. So I just want to pray that God will just have his hand upon her, bring a quick healing. But that, not, not just that, but that God will bring salvation in her situation. Yes. Amen. That God will bring salvation to her and, 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 and God will be with her and my son. Amen. Amen. So you just want to pray for that and, and that God will just help her. Amen. She's going to see about getting some medical attention. So I want to pray that that she's okay, that it's just uh, it's just tendons and muscles, that it's not nothing severe. 
But I just want to pray that God will just help them, that God will just bless them and be, and be in their situation. Amen. 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 Um, this, this morning, he introduced himself as Anthony to all you guys. I always call him Tony. <laughs> I've known Tony for many years now. Uh, Brother Tony was part of the North Hollywood Church. He's just probably a little kid. <laughs> and uh, he's no longer a little kid. He's a grown man with a wife and kids. Amen. And him and his brother and his mom's always been a blessing. And uh, I think even his mom, she might have drove him along too. But I think even his mom went to Madeira to go with the outreach team when they went up there when we were in Madeira back in 99, 98, sometime around there. Um, I was the youth leader here in Rialto. And uh, Tony and his wife, they, they did youth and all that stuff in, in North Hollywood. And he was a director over there. And he would call up and for outreach teams. And I see him with, with Pastor Pastor Andy now. So Pastor Andy was the one that was here a couple weeks ago. Everybody knows him as the mustache man. Amen. The big mustache. Amen. I call him Pastor Primo. Amen. I, I'm I still tell you he's related. I know he is. He's, he's, we're, we're distant cousins. I know we are. Um, but uh, every time I go out there, you know what? There's one thing. There's one thing about about serving God in our fellowship is in our fellowship, and you see this now as we do things locally in the Inland Empire, you you get together with one with the other churches and you get to see you get to see familiar faces and you get to see people who are serving God as you are serving God. And this is important because you're not alone in serving God. Amen. You're not you're not alone in serving God. Other people are like minded doing the things that we're doing. Amen. The struggles you have, other people in other churches have them too. You know, sometimes we see lives and say, man, they're doing really good. Amen. I remember you know, recently we've gone to these other countries. Meanwhile, you know, before I was even, even got even open these doors, I'm, I'm watching them go to Thailand and everywhere else. Amen. Like, man, Lord, I want to go to these places, you know. Amen. And God begins to open doors, you know. So That's people right. go through the same things. Yes. And, and God really has a way of, of building relationships and, 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 and allowing to see the move of God. I'll tell you one thing, not just as a pastor, but just as a man of God. It's always a blessing to see people's lives blessed, Amen. to see them grow, to see them mature, to see them develop. Amen. And through the years, I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit older than, uh, than, than Tony, just a little bit, like about two, three years older or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, but it's been a blessing to see him, see him grow in the ministry and see him grow with the pastor. And, and, uh, and I'll tell you what, Pastor Andy and Sister Debbie, they're, they're our friends. They're more than our friends. They're our family. We love them to death. We, they're our travel buddies. And like I said, I've gone everywhere from I've gone everywhere from Elvis Presley's house to the Noah's Ark with them. Amen. <laughs> and to know that they got people, amen, like, 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 Pastor, like, like Brother Tony and his wife, amen, they're to help us support it. It's a blessing to my heart. So you know what? I want to ask you to just give them a warm welcome, amen, as amen. you come to this morning. <laughs> First of all, I just want to extend my appreciation to Pastor Ben and Sister Martha for allowing me the opportunity to come here and to share something with you guys. Um, uh, like Pastor said, I grew up in the church, so you know when you grow up, you do kind of everything. I play in the music team, youth leader, outreach, everything. So um, uh, you know, with that, you just come certain experiences, and so I, I'm very appreciative of coming up on stage because I understand the, the gravity of what it means to be up on a on a stage behind a pulpit and sharing a word with people. Amen. So, uh, like Pastor said, you know, I grew up in church. Um, I met my wife uh, at Starbucks. We both worked together at Starbucks. And um, when I started dating her, I told her, you should come to church with me. And she's like, this guy, does he go to church or does he go to church? You know, because it's not the same thing. <laughs> and uh, so she came out of church with me. And then, you know, ever since then, we started dating. We got married. And so, praise God. Uh, thank you to my wife for being here um, and my son Stefan. Uh, so I'm going to get started. Uh, I'm just going to open us up in prayer and then we'll, we'll begin. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to be here today, Lord. I pray that you would just bless us, Father God, that you would just 
Uh, bring forth your word, Lord, that it would resonate in our hearts and our minds, Lord, and that your will be done in this place. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, today I want to talk about being of a different spirit. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> I believe that, you know, church people sometimes aren't so distinctive from people who aren't considered church people. Even though they come to this, uh, you know, they come inside this place and they're in the building on a Sunday and they put on whatever they put on. Uh, but they're not very different, you know. Maybe that might describe us or maybe that might describe us at a certain time. But God has called his people to be different, to be set apart, uh, to be set apart for him. Um, and, you know, that is what we are called to be. That is what we're supposed to do. Um if you would follow along with me, we're going to get in our first verse uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Uh, this first verse comes at a time where the people of Israel have been brought out of Egypt. And now Moses is telling a people who have been enslaved for hundreds and hundreds of years that, hey, we have been called to be different. We are, in fact, not the same as what we, you know, the situation that they were in while they lived in Egypt. They were now a different people, and God is uh, Moses is telling them here in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 2. He says, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. And, you know, that describes us today, too. You know, Moses was talking to these people thousands of years ago. And yet, the Bible says that his promises and his word are available, are for us today. And so you and I are being called to be a different people. How many people believe that here today? Yeah. Amen. We have called to be a different people. Um, anybody remember their first car? Maybe your first car was a nice car. Maybe your first car was a, a, a lemon or a jalopy, they say. I remember my first car. My first car was a, a 1995 Jetta. It was a little stick shift car, and uh, my first car I got in 2006, that's when I was in high school. And so I remember having a 10-year-old car, and it looked like a 10-year-old car. You know, it was an old car. And you got in there, and it was, you still had to roll down windows. Uh, the girl back there in the green, she looks young. You ever been in a car, they have to roll down the windows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, none of my doors locked. They weren't automatic. You know, you had to push them locked, or, or else they didn't lock. And I just remember that was just an old car. I mean, all four tires were different brands from different years, from different conditions. One of them even had the, the wire thread still exposed in the tire. You know, that's how I just, it was my first car. I was learning how to drive on it. I didn't take care of it. I didn't know there was such thing as doing an oil change. And it was just, it was my first car that I learned how to drive on. And, uh, you know, once, you know, once you start getting a car, usually the people in your group start getting the car at the same time. And. And my best friend, he got his first car, too. Except, you know, this is 2006, so his car was like a 2002 Lexus. And, uh, man, he, he had these 20-inch rims on them, and he had the windows all tinted. It was this little coupe, and he had a stereo in there. It was his, brother's, his older brother's car that he gave him. And getting into that car was like, Shh, this is not a first car. This is like a real car, you know? This is a car that you drive when you're grown up, when you know, you've made it, and and my car, that was a first car, you know, you know, it, it definitely was a car that you got for somebody when they're first starting to drive, and his car was like, this is, this is premium, man, leather seats, and uh, six CD changer, wow, you know, mine just had the cassette, and I was like, this is truly a different animal, you know, that car had a different spirit about it, you know, it was premium, it was nice, it was, you know, the luxury car, whereas my car had a, a different feeling about it too, right? And you know, to put this very simply, you know, I know we are more than just pieces of metal, we are more than just a ten, uh, cars and stuff, but we are to be called of a different spirit. We are supposed to be different. And so why I don't want to compare us to other people, I do want to compare us to maybe what we used to be, or what we used to be like, or how we used to think, or how we used to talk, and, um, you know, God has called us to be different. In fact, you know, in, in, the, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2, Moses is telling the people, you are a holy people. 
Holy means to be set apart for God. That is what holy means. He's telling him, you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above people of all of, of, of people of all the earth. And you and I, we got to look at ourselves as holy treasure. You know, uh, Pastor Ben is saying, you know, going to a place like Paris, you know, is not as far, is not as a as a reach, far as a reach as you may think it is. It, it is possible. It can happen. It's very true. Yes, it does. You know, little steps you can do it. Little steps you can make it. But sometimes, you know, we see places like that, and we think about cities across the ocean. We think, I can never go to a place like that. That's something I can never accomplish. May see nice cars on the road. That, that's not a car maybe I can drive or now it's houses in our community. That's not a house that maybe I can have. But you see, this verse here is saying we are a chosen people. God chose us and set, apart, set us apart as a treasure for himself. And so you and I have to look at ourselves as something more than just what we look at in the mirror, more than just what we see, our, our social status, our income status, our marital status, our past, our present. God has called us to be a chosen people a treasure unto him and so and so that's what you know i want to look at today and so what does that mean for us today does that mean that christians were supposed to look different you know i am chosen i am a treasure should i carry myself differently should i dress differently you know sometimes in movies the christians are always dressed a little a little dorky you know like if you see the christian in the movie it's a a guy with like a knitted sweater on and like a lady with a long skirt on and you know and they're the, the christian character in the movie or the show um and you know today that's that's not really the case right we don't we don't look like that well you know what christianity our relationship with god has to do with more than just our dress code uh what we call ourselves has to do with more than just how we do our hair, what kind of clothes that we wear, uh, how we speak, how we talk, because anybody can fake it, right? Anybody can fake it. But what, what really depends, um, what really determines our relationship with God is what's on the inside, what our spirit is. Because what our spirit is and what our heart is, that stuff is going to come out in the way that we talk. You know, um, anybody here know any vegans or vegetarians? Usually somebody knows maybe one, right? <laughs> Especially Latinos. Maybe there's like one in the family. Um, uh, we have a, a vegetarian in the family. And, and my mom, and it's my brother. And my mom always cooks when she has everybody over. She'll make the what, taquitos or enchiladas or whatever it is. And then there's always the vegetarian option for my brother, right? And so if you ever know any vegans or vegetarians, we also have a vegan in our church. And so when we do Pollux or stuff, she's always, we always know Sister Ruby's got to have, we got to have something for Sister Ruby, you know, so she feels included. And, you know, vegans and vegetarians, before they go anywhere, they're always asking, what's in this? What, what is this made out of? What is in here? Because they're vegetarian. They're not just going to eat carnitas, right? They're not just going to dig into some pork or some beef. It's going to throw their whole system off. They're going to have an upset stomach. Whatever reasons they, they, uh, they, they have that lifestyle. That is that is how they eat. You know, I, I wonder. You know, you know how vegetarians they go. You know, what's in this? They got to be very careful. You know, I, I don't want to just put anything into my system. What if Christians were also like that? You know, we're called to be of a different spirit. We're called to be of a different people. Somebody invites us. I was like, well, what's going to be at that that situation? What's going to be at that event? Because I just can't be anywhere. And it's not because I don't want people to see me the wrong way, but because in the inside. My spirit, I just can't be around certain things because it affects my spirit. I just can't hear certain things because it affects my spirit. I just can't be around certain people, environments, conditions. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Right? Because on the inside, we're of a different spirit. God has called us to be a different spirit set apart for him. And so that is what I'm going to look at today um, in the different spirits. So the next verse that we're going to read comes out of the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 6 through 9 um, so as you get it numbers verses 14 i'm sorry numbers chapter 14 verse 6 through 9 and a little bit of backstory here once again um moses has brought the people out of egypt they, he's brought them out of slavery you know he's already gotten the ten commandments he already came down they've already worshiped the golden calf they're already you know, at this point uh, of the Bible that we read, they've already gone through these things. And so now Moses is saying they've come just to the border 
the land of Canaan, the promised land. And God tells Moses, okay, grab, you know, have one person from every tribe to go out into the promised land, to spy it out, um, and to bring back a report. And so uh, we pick up the verse here in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 6 through 9. The 12, the 12 spies go into the land of Canaan. They look at it. They see what it is. And they come back, and they're giving their report. And this is where we pick it up. Verse 6, it says, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, they tore their clothes. In verse 7, And they spoke to all the congregation and the children of Israel, saying, The land we passed through to spy out is exceedingly good land. Verse 8, If the Lord delights in us, uh, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows of milk and honey. Verse 9, Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection, their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And so what has happened was that the 12 spies came back and they started saying, This land over there is crazy. There's huge cities over there. There's even huge people. They said they even compare themselves to like grasshoppers compared to these people. There there is giants in these lands and we're just a small people. I mean, they have fortified cities and there's like, you know, they even brought back some fruit from the land to show what it looked like. And and they're instilling suddenly a spirit of fear amongst the people of Israel. And the people are getting very fearful and they're all kind of like, oh, my gosh. And suddenly there's a panic that has set in amongst the crowd as, as the spies came and they gave their report. And then Caleb and Joshua, um, two two different men, they go, they you know they interject and they stop the people and they say, you know what, guys, God has given us this land. He's like, this land is an exceedingly good land. You know, if the Lord is with us, He's going to give us what He's promised us. And like Pastor Ben was saying, you know what you what you guys have been going through, that His promises are yes and amen. This was a promise from God to the people of Israel that I'm going to take you to a promised land and I'm going to give it to you. Sometimes when we hear about good things, we only hear about, we only want to focus on the good things. I'm going to give you something. We're going to have a, you know, if you're married, you want a blessed marriage. We think about just the end result, a blessed marriage. If you have family, you know, you think about just a blessed family. Well, you know, sometimes it takes work to get to that blessing. It takes work to get to that place of prosperity. It takes work. You have to overcome some challenges before you arrive to that promise promises of God. And this is what was going on with these people here. God said, I'm going to give you a promised land, the land of Canaan. They go in, they spy it out, but then they come back and they say, but it's scary over there. Well, God said he's going to give it to you. You're just going to have to put a little bit of muscle behind it and go get it and go grab it and go, you know, uh, enjoy it. And so, you know, this is what's going on here is that Caleb and Joshua, uh, they knew who God was. They knew who God was more than just on a on a, a surface level. You know, at the time, at this time of the of the Bible, God had already showed up as a cloud amongst amongst the people out in the desert. He had showed up as a pillar. He had showed up as, as supplying them with manna that was on the ground. He had showed up as a pillar in front of the tabernacle. They had already seen who God was. They saw how he worked. They saw what he did. Um but Caleb and Joshua, they knew God on the inside. Yes. They had a strong conviction in them, so much so that they went up against 10 other people who had a bad report, and they said, no, guys, it doesn't have to be like that. This is who God is. This is the promises that we can have. If God delights in us, and he's going to give us these things, let's just not re re uh, rebel against God. And, you know, um, uh, I'd like to use this analogy and sometimes looking at our own life where Sometimes it feels like we're 10 different people on the inside. You know, sometimes it feels like we're the person who can trust God. Sometimes it feels like we're the person who's always questioning, is this whole Jesus thing a hoax? Is it real? Is it for real? You know, uh, we take, start taking a look at the people around us and they think they don't even go to church and they look, they look like they got everything figured out. You know, if I didn't go to church, I wouldn't have to worry about these things. And, and you know, we're, we're conflicted on the inside because we're just imperfect. We're imperfect and we're developing our spirituality. And what we're doing is a spiritual work. Developing a relationship with God requires a spiritual diligence. It requires a spiritual strengthening. And so our, our relationship with God is something that's formed on the inside and that we're constantly putting to death the old man, the old woman, right? It's 
come to know God. And so Caleb and Joshua here, they knew who God was. And they had to come against the naysayers. They had to come against the doubters. They had to come against those things that were instilling fear. And in our life, we have to come against those things too, right? We approach situations. Maybe we're praying for breakthrough. Maybe we're praying for healing for family members, for marriages, for children. And when the naysaying starts coming into our mind, oh, but then they're too far gone. This couple, oh gosh, this one even you know worships the stones and the moons, and the, when the whole eclipse happened, they're out there fasting, and you know, because people do weird, you know, do weird things, and they believe in weird things, you know. Um, where we live, where Chris and I used to live, it was just a very liberal. I don't know how how it is out here, but from my understanding, LA is just like liberal. As soon as you start going outside of LA, it starts getting a little more conservative. But where we live. Uh, there was this huge gemstone store. And, um, you know, mo like most towns, there was like this main boulevard where all the shops are. And we lived just right behind the main boulevard with all the shops. And so this big gemstone place was there. And we would just drive by it. And Chris and I would just be like, man, people really just really believe in those little stones that, you know, this, this stone wards off this. And this bracelet stone will bring this to me. And... This lamp well, it has this kind of energy, and if I place these, and you know, people put energy and believe into a lot of weird things, you know, and sometimes because we're imperfect, we can pick up on things and be like, well, that don't sound too bad, you know, well, that actually kind of makes sense when you think about it, and well, you know, and we start to reason within ourselves, and that's basically what happened here in the book of Numbers. The people of Israel who had taken out of slavery, who had been provided for with manna, who had been protected for, who, who seen God open up the waters, had now come to a place where they can go in and inherit a promise, and the people had come back, 10 other spies had come back and given a scary report, and it suddenly infiltrated their mind. And they started to be very convinced that, you know what, it sounds too scary. I don't think we can do this. But Caleb and Joshua rose up and they said, no, God can take us there. God can do it. And that's like us when we snap into it and say, I still know who God is. Amen. You know, I know who God is. God, that's, why I have to, that's why I say God is more than just what we do on a Sunday. God is more than just whatever, you know, for guys, we put on a, a shirt and a tie, you know, a dress, do our hair, whatever. God is more than those things. He's more than just a Sunday service. When we're in here and we're worshiping these awesome songs and we're listening to the word, that, you know, that is who God is. God is a spiritual yeah. being. He yeah. is working in us. He is for us. He goes before us, yes. you know. And so Caleb and Joshua here, they knew that God, and they knew him on that level. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that's what, that is what I want us as a church to do. You know, the, the title of this, uh, this uh, message is being of a different spirit. We got to be of a different spirit. We got to be of a different spirit. And like I said, I don't want to compare us to everybody outside of the church because this message is for us in this place, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I want us to be of a different spirit than maybe who we were even just yesterday, yeah. right? Because sometimes changes happen from just day to day. Yesterday wasn't so great. The battle I had yesterday, I didn't handle it so well. You know, the conversation I had a week ago with this wasn't a good example who Christ is in my life. And so today, today, you and I are called to be of a different spirit, called to be of a different spirit of knowing who God is and practicing that. So, you know, Moses starts to, uh, Moses has these people come back and they start telling the people and the people start getting encouraged and, and the people start getting stirred up and Caleb and Joshua are really trying to, you know, shift the people's direction into something else, uh, but they can't see it. They can't see it. And so uh, they, the, the people even start saying, you know what, let's go back to Egypt, man. We're done with this. Like we've already came through starvation. We've already come through, you know, uh, being tired and being thirsty. And the people had already spent so much time reminiscing on the past back in Egypt. And so they said, I'd just rather, people, that they started saying, let's just select us a leader here who will take us back to Egypt. And, you know, that's a scary thing because sometimes, like I said, you know, we're imperfect beings. And some of us may remember parts of our past that were actually good parts of our past. You know, you know the fun that you used to have, the fun times, you know, the good times. You know, those are those are sweet memories, right? Chris and I, um, you know, we met each other when we were 24, and then got married at 26. And so from high school till our 20s, we had a whole different life that we didn't know each other about. And sometimes we'll share and we'll swap stories. Like, oh my gosh, we'll be driving. 
I don't know, by Silver Lake, if you know the LA area, I'm like, oh, I remember this place. On Thursday nights, there's like a reggae club here, and me and my friends, and we would start sharing stuff, and oh yeah, you know, down in Hollywood, like we would go on Friday night, and we start sharing some stories, and we'll just start like, you know, reminiscing, but um, eventually, sometimes what can happen is we start to look back at the past and think, it was kind of sweet back then, you know? I, I didn't have the problems, the struggle. I wasn't so conflicted spiritually. I just basically did what I wanted and I had what I, with those things that I really enjoyed. And that's basically what's going on here. The people of Egypt, they started hearing the report that the future was scary. The land that they were gonna go possess, the promised land, the promises that God had for them, they started to sound a little scary because it started to mean they were gonna have to put some work forth some work. They are gonna have to fight some battles to get there. It might get a little crazy. It might get a little hard. And so the future, the promises of God sound a little too scary. Where the past, I know what's in the past. Back there, I know what's it back in Egypt. I know how to operate in Egypt. I know how to function. I know the good things about Egypt. Yeah, there was slavery, but at least I had whatever, right? And so that's what's basically what's happening here. The people are starting reminiscing and they're like, let's select us a leader and let's go back. And so God is hearing all this. And like Pastor said, God is a jealous God. Yeah. And so he's hearing the people complain and he goes and he's having a conversation with Moses and he tells Moses, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to get rid of them. How do they keep testing me in this? How does this keep happening? And that's where we're going to pick it up in, in our next verse. Uh, same book, chap Numbers chapter 14. Let's drop down to verse 20 through 24. So the people are complaining, the people are, 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 are whining, and they're getting angry, and so much so, they want to now go back to their past. And Moses goes and he starts talking with God, he starts pleading with God, because God says, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to really get rid of these people. And he's like, God, just please don't, don't do that. Moses starts pleading with God, he's like, God, you know, you don't want to have all your people come out here just to kill them, it's going to give you a bad name, he tells God. And God is listening to him, and he picks it up here in verse 20. He says, Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, talking to Moses. But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Verse 22, Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. Verse 23, they certainly shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. Verse 24, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has fallen thee fully, I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit him. See, Caleb had a different spirit in him. He wasn't like the rest of his people. And in fact, they all came from the same place. Caleb was from where everybody else was from, Egypt, in slavery. He wasn't a part of the generation that was born out in the wilderness. He was from Egypt. He had, they, they were brought in, into the same place. You know, uh, you and I come from all kinds of walks of life. Um, anybody here from San Fernando Valley? Yeah, this is me and Chris, all right? Where, <laughs> where's everybody else from? Who knows, right? Everybody comes from different parts of life. Um, maybe you're an only child. I grew up with five siblings in the house. Um, my mom basically raised us as, as a single mom. Even though she was married, my, uh, her husband, my stepdad, he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And so, you know, that kind of lifestyle growing up, it, certain things just happened in our home. Um, maybe you had a similar lifestyle. Maybe you didn't. But here, Caleb and Joshua, they're from all the same people. Everybody had the same social status. Everybody had the same economic status. Uh, nobody was doing anything different. They were all in the wilderness together. Um, and so, you know, even though some of us may come from different, uh, different backgrounds um, or the same backgrounds, we can have a different mindset. And you most likely, you most, this is most prevalent in our families right where everybody you know grew in your family everybody grew up the same everybody you know uh, is from the same maybe the same area but there's that one cousin or that certain tia or that tio or that sibling they just think differently they think bigger they think longer they want more than maybe just what's around them and then there's other family members where you know they don't think that way 
And, and sometimes I can even say, sometimes in the church that happens, right? Uh, there's members in the church who are like, we can take the land. We can go out in outreach. We can bring all these people here. We can capture the traffic on the street. And then there's others who say, well, who's going to see us in this little pocket here? Well, who's going to, right? And so, um, and then once again, how's that reflect on the inside? Well, we can be of a different spirit based on where we've come from, based on what we've experienced, based on the things and, and the, the things that we've seen and things that we've had to go through. We can be of a different spirit on the inside. And basically, Caleb, he had a different spirit in him. And because he had a different spirit in him, the book of Numbers says that God says, Caleb, he's going to go into the promised land. In fact, it was actually Caleb and Joshua, both of them. They're going to go into the promised land. If we go back to Numbers, it says, um, in verse 24, but Caleb, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and he has followed me fully, I will bring into the land. You know, um, this whole, I, I like to say this Jesus thing, this whole Jesus thing, it takes work. Amen. It takes work. Yes. And it's not a, a year by year thing. It's a day by day thing. And sometimes it's an hour by hour thing, depending on the day, right? But this this Jesus thing, it's a day by day thing. Yeah. Today might be easy because it's Sunday, you don't have work. I don't know, maybe you do and it's 10 o'clock worked out and you showed up and it's cool. It, Monday may not be so easy to be Jesus at church. I mean, at work, right? Tuesday may not be so easy to be Jesus amongst your family and your social circles and whatever experiences you have to deal with. Um, this, this thing takes work day by day. And unfortunately, because we're imperfect and because we're weak by our own nature, we don't uh, you know, trust God with our full strength, trust God to supply us with that strength, and we fall back a bit. And, th and this, this happens in, in everybody, in the best of people. We fall back a bit spiritually, but the, the people that stay on track are the ones that snap out of them and say, they got to keep going. They got to keep pressing forward. Today, maybe today wasn't so great. Maybe yesterday wasn't, but tomorrow is going to be better. God has given me the strength. You know, I got to get in. I got to get in there and I got to pray and I got to because I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling challenged. I'm feeling this. You know, if you're married, you know, this is something that couples often do. It's something my wife and I do a lot is that and it's taken a lot of work to do is just being honest with each other. Where if something just bugs us and uh, normally, you know, early on in our in our newlywed life, uh, if I was upset with something, I was in the room and she was in the living room. And then, you know, we wouldn't talk and I'd be like, are you hungry? I want tacos. Okay. And we like go and we wouldn't communicate. And now, like, you know, we, we've learned to just like, we have to talk and we have to communicate. And it's like, hey, this is bugging me. Hey, can you have a minute? I want to talk to you. Hey, I didn't like this. You know, the same with God. We don't just see God on Sunday and then like all week nothing happens. We come back on Sunday or oh, I'm at church again. This is a day by day thing. This is following God fully. Just like it says here in, in Numbers, Caleb followed God fully, meaning with everything, with his mind, with his heart, with his actions. You know, you and I have been called to be different. God calls us a chosen treasure set apart for him. That means we have been called to be fully worshiping God. Um, because the scary part is when we do halfway, nothing happens with halfway. In fact, it's often more uh, detrimental to only do something halfway, right? Um, I just started, you know, my, my wife and I moved into a new place that has a garage. And um, I never had a garage before. And so it's cool having a garage. I don't know, maybe guys, you know, you have a garage, you can do stuff in your garage. Amen. And so, um, you know, another thing, YouTube Academy, you can learn anything on YouTube. <laughs> and so uh, I, I, our, our washer, the drain pump went out. And so it wasn't draining all the water and the clothes were staying wet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I don't, I, this thing looks expensive. I don't know what this is gonna cost. You know, I bought off of Craigslist anyway. So I'm like, well, YouTube Academy, let's see. <laughs> And so I started putting in like, okay, LG washer, drain pump not working. I'm like, wait a minute, I can do that. And so yeah, I grabbed my tools and I got the thing off, replaced the pump. I was like, yeah, I felt accomplished. I was like, I did it, you know? And so like, I had, I had to make sure, and, and um, Pastor Ben said, you know, he mentioned me, my brother, and my mom. My brother is the hands-on guy. 
He looks like the hands-on guy, okay? He, <laughs> he's stockier, he's got a full he uh, facial hair, you know? He looks like the hands-on guy. He works for uh, you know, SoCal Gas Company, and so I'm not the hands-on guy, you know? Um, I, I may be able to do something, but I'm mostly just, I like being in the kitchen. I, I'm a cook, you know, I like cooking and stuff. And so, um, you know, I fix it and I feel accomplished. And like, I turned the dial and I was like, it works now, Crystal. The washer <laughs> works now, you know? Um, and so I wanted to make sure that it worked because this, this thing, you know, if, if it didn't work, if I missed a part, if I missed something, you know, it was going to be bad. You know, I can't just halfway do that kind of job. Right? I would have still had the same problem. It might have been worse. It might have affected something else. I might have had my garage flooded with water. I don't know. You can't do things halfway with God. It does not help us. In fact, it, oftentimes it makes it worse because there's a spiritual conflict happening on the inside. If we're not fully submitted, nothing happens. And we go crazy thinking about, God, why aren't things happening? Because you're not fully submitted. You haven't worshipped me Fully, I can't do anything. God says he can't do anything with halfway. He can't do anything with lukewarm. Mm. Either be hot or be cold. So God knows how to diagnose, right? Either be this or be that. But being in the middle, being halfway, being just part-time, being just on Sunday, whatever the case is, God cannot bless. But Caleb, he had a different spirit. Caleb worshiped God. Caleb knew who God was, and he served him fully. And because of that, Caleb was able to go into the promised land. But in verse 24, it says, He followed me fully. I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. There's a generation coming after us. Uh, you know, there's a little baby back there. There's my son right there. You know, I think this is your son? Yeah, this is your son, you know? <laughs> now that, big, now that big guy came from you, you know? <laughs> There's a, there's a generation coming after us. There's a descendants. And you may say, well, I don't have children or my kids or my whatever. There's still a generation coming after you. You and I are still able to be uh, 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 impressionable. You and I are still be able to affect. You and I are still able to leave something for a generation that's coming, back, coming behind us. You know, If you're part of a church, even more so because there's younger children, there's younger brothers and sisters, there's younger families. There's families that are not yet in this place that you and I can still be uh, uh, have an impact on. And so Caleb, because he was of a different spirit, because he worshiped God fully, because he knew his worth and he knew who God was and he knew who he was in God, he was able to inherit something, a blessing, a promise. Um, and because of that, if you continue reading the Bible, uh, his descendants were blessed. God gave him a land, a prosperous land, a good land. And you know, you and I, there's some, there's a generation coming out behind us. And you know, maybe your kids are grown, or maybe you know they're far, they've moved away. You know, speaking to the backgrounds of where we come from, you know, or maybe they've gone on somewhere else. Who knows what what, what it is? But you and I can still be here in God. You and I can still uh, worship God and serve Him fully because I know something coming after me. I want it to be blessed. Amen. You know, I want it to be blessed. I want my son. He's four years old. He, you know. Uh, everything that we do at home, you know, we try to instill into him. If we pray, he'll start digging in. We're like, oh, did you pray yet? And he'll drop his fork and he'll do his little prayer. And, and now he's starting to learn some of the worship songs. And so one of the songs we sang today, what was it? Um, what was it? Oh, I got a reason to praise. Did we sing that yet? No. No. We're listening to it on the way here. Worthy is your name. Oh, yeah. Worthy is your name, Jesus. That's his part. He'll say that again. Aww. Jesus. Yeah. And so when we're worshiping it, we, we heard him. We both looked at him, and then he got shy. He stopped singing. Um, you know, I, I'm in a position to, to worship God fully because of the generation that's coming after me. Because of my descendants, I want him to be blessed. You know, if you're a parent, you want your descendants to be blessed. That's your baby over there. You know, sister, do everything you can to make sure that baby has a way better life than you. You know, I, I say this all the time. My son is going to do everything better than me. He's going to be smarter. He's going to be richer. He's going to be wiser. He's going to know how things work way better than me. He's already off to a way better start than I was. And so, you know, Caleb here, being of a different spirit, he went in to inherit a promise of God. And because he worshiped God fully, he was able to attain that promises. The Bible says there are promises for us. 
We just have to go get them. Amen. We just have to. And how do we do that? We seek God. Amen. We worship God yes. fully, right? Not halfway, not a little bit, not just on Sunday. We have to do it fully. Once that happens, and like Pastor was using the example of God, I want to do fully in my finances, in my marriage, in my family, in my health, everything. Then God can start doing things. Yes. God can start yes. blessing things. But until we come to that point, we're going to be just like the people here in Israel. They came just to the boundary. The Bible says there was just a river that was splitting them from this side to the promised land. And it was up to the border. And I wonder, you know, if you and I, how many times we've come up just to the border of God's promise for us, but we weren't ready to fully serve him. And because of it, we weren't able to fully receive a promise that God had for us. How many times have we come right up to the border, but because we weren't truly of a different spirit yet, we couldn't go and inherit what God has in store for us. And so, you know, my prayer for us today is we got to be of a different spirit. Yeah. You know, we got to be of a different spirit. And once again, this is not comparing to the people outside of the place. This is comparing to who we were yesterday, the day before, or in our years, or in our time past. God has called us to be a chosen people, holy, set apart from him. Does that describe you and I? Yeah. Well, maybe not so much right now, but it definitely can, Absolutely. right? Or maybe not so much, or, you know, oftentimes, sometimes in our Christian walk, we know how it goes. We're on mountaintops, and then we're in valleys, and then we're kind of like in that middle place, and we're on another high. You know, maybe that used to describe who I was, but, you know, life has been hard, and struggles that have come, and people that I've had to interact with, and situations I've had to go through, it's changed who I am today. Well, well, that's how life goes. We just grow. We just grow. But if we're able to go through that time and just trust God with our life, we truly will be of a different spirit. And I pray that us as, you know, us here in this room today, that we can be of that different spirit to go in and inherit those promises that God has in store for us. Because I truly believe that until we are, we're not going to be able to fully receive them. We may be able to get a little bit of it, and we may be able to still get some good things. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the earth is going to open us up and swallow us in or that lightning is going to come, you know. But the full blessing, the full promise, the full inheritance is only going to happen when we're able to submit to God fully and truly be of that different spirit. So that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, today, if you would just bow your head with me. Um, I hope that you took something from this service. You know, this is a message for God's people. This is a message for you and I. Uh, you know, uh, if you haven't had a chance to read the story of when Moses calls the people out, uh, you know, it's an awesome, it's an awesome uh, story. But also, it's a, it's a great example of just how God will provide for his people. Yeah. And you and I have to be fully submitted to God to see his full work be done in us. And I believe that, you know, you, we have been called to be a different people. We have been called to be a chosen people. And we have to value ourselves that way. We just can't be involved in just anything. We just can't give in to any old mindset. We just can't believe just any old thing that we hear. We have been set apart for God. And with that, there's a true blessing in there. And I believe that until we can activate that, until we can really get into that, we can fully experience God the way he's designed us to experience him. And so I pray today, you know, if you're having struggle with that on your own, that you would just connect with God in spirit and say, God, I want to be of a different spirit. I want to be of a different spirit. I don't like who I either, you know, am today, or I don't like what I've been, or I don't like those traits about me that I can't get rid of. God, show me how to do it. And God is faithful to provide. He is faithful to provide. The Bible says that he gives without partiality, meaning he doesn't say just because you're this or just because you're that, I'll give you a little bit or I'll give you a lot. When we come to God and we want him, God says, I give without partiality. He gives us all of it. We just have to come to him and seek him and draw on that spirit. So we're just going to take this time to just worship God. I uh, encourage you, you know, if you need to come to the altar to just bring it before him, to just lay it at the altar, to lay that spirit down that you've been carrying or an old mindset that we would just take this opportunity and worship him today.